Hi y'all, this is Stephanie Smith. I'm the sixth district chairperson for Eagle Forum. And Iva Hendon asked me to do this video to let y'all know where things are with the vaccine passport bill that passed, what Eagle Forum is doing um, to protect or um, help governmental employees who are impacted, negatively impacted by vaccine mandates, and a quick little update on um, some background information about masking in schools. As y'all know, the um, Senate Bill 267 was passed and signed by Kay Ivey, the Vaccine Passport Ban Bill. That bill protects employees of governmental entities. Um, so that includes all um, state employees um, from being um, told that they have to produce proof of their vaccination. Also, it protects all public employees from being mandated to vaccinate. Um, Eagle Forum worked diligently on that bill. It wasn't uh, exactly what we wanted. We would love to see uh, private protections as well, but right now it only protects um, public employees. Once we realized UAB and some other entities were um, mandating documentation for the vaccination and mandating the vaccine for their employees, we reached out to um, Steve Marshall and asked him to intervene on behalf of UAB employees. And um, he has done so in a narrow way. Um, the, it was, became clear to us that um, St. Vincent's, through an operating agreement that they signed in January of 2020, was um, working with UAB. They were making decisions in concert with each other and UAB and St. Vincent's have mandated documentation and vaccinations for all of their employees, all of their vendors, all of their students, all of their volunteers, and um, that's unlawful. And so uh, uh, we sent a letter to Steve Marshall asking for him to intervene on behalf of those employees. He has sent a cease and desist letter to um, some of those um, hospitals that were using, illegally using Alabama Department of Public Health information against their employees um, as far as documentation of the vaccine. So he has intervened on behalf of those employees for that narrow um, measurement, but we would like for him to um, intervene more affirmatively, meaning um, have UAB and Ascension uh, stop mandating the vaccination for their employees because they are considered governmental entities. Both St. Vincent's and UAB have deadlines coming up very soon. The UAB deadline um, is the 21st of September to ask for a religious or medical exemption. The St. Vincent's deadline is October 1st. The way the forms are done are online for those employees. And so they're being forced to document their vaccination in order to ask for an exemption. That's also against the law. That's against the act um, that was produced by the passage of Senate Bill 267. Um, like I said, the situation affects specific employees, all, all of the medical workers at UAB and at St. Vincent's Ascension also, um, it affects really thousands of people, um, maybe tens of thousands of people because of the number of vendors and students and volunteers um, who need access to those governmental buildings. Um, and they are restricting, at, once the deadline comes, which is November 12th, the deadline for vaccination is November 12th for, those, um, for all of those thousands of people. They will also be restricting access to those governmental buildings um, from vendors and others who are unvaccinated. Um, again, the Eagle Forum has been working behind the scenes diligently on this for um, a couple of months. And um, it, all the information about this can be found on the Eagle Forum website, alabamaeagle.org. Um, but the message for Eagle Forum advocates and members is that we really need um, Kay Ivey to intervene on behalf of these employees. 
We need Steve Marshall to intervene on behalf of these employees, and we need for the governmental entities that are doing this unlawfully to stop breaking the law. Um, as far as masks go, the Alabama Department of Public Health sent a letter to all superintendents of mask optional schools on August 12th. The content of the letter was from Scott Harris, and um, it was to put pressure, uh, unyielding pressure, on those school boards and those superintendents to mask all of the state of Alabama. Kay Ivey has said that she was not going to do that. She was, she was um, going to leave that up to the local school boards. Um, the state school board also said that masking of students was going to be up to the local school boards, but then the Department of Public Health has put undue pressure on the superintendents and on the local school boards to mask kids. And the reasoning is that um, it's more about quarantining than it is about illness. The ADPH toolkit um, doesn't specify masking except for the fact that um, vaccinated children in the school system are not required to quarantine if there's a close contact. Also, um, children who have recovered from COVID in the last 90 days are not required to quarantine from a close contact. Also, any masked children are not required to quarantine for a close contact. That's a change from last year. Um, and the, the change has created a, a quarantine crisis within the schools. And many superintendents and school board members, local school board members are concerned that there are a number, um, thousands of children who are being quarantined because of the close contact requirements in the Department of Public, Public Health Toolkit, which are recommendations, not mandates, not laws. Um, they're recommendations, but um, they're being followed to the T by most local school boards. And it's really a crisis of quarantine more than it is a crisis of um, actual illness within the school, but there are thousands of children who have missed school because of the close contact requirement or recommendation that are being treated as requirements. And um, therefore most, um, I think the number is 90% of local school board, um, local school boards decided to go ahead and mask their students. What needs to be told and, um, and reported to your local school board and your local superintendents is what Scott Harris has now been asked to say and has said publicly, which is the toolkit is not a requirement. The toolkit is a set of recommendations. There is no legal requirement for local school boards to follow them. Um, there is no mandate um, or part of any sort of emergency order uh, from the state or from KIV that would instigate having to mask children in the schools. So the school board is, it is truly up to the school boards. They have been pressured um, by the Department of Public Health several times, but there are no recommendations to that effect. And so local school boards can act um, boldly and can act um, in the affirmative for, for making masks optional. They have that choice and we need to make sure that they understand that and we may need to make sure that um, they are supported in doing that. So um, overall, the frustration level, I'm sure for y'all, just like it is for me, is pretty high that uh, it's clear that the vaccine passport ban bill is not being adhered to and the law is not um, being followed on several different areas on the uh, public health situation with the masking of, of children in schools, with um, the UAB and Ascension situation, um, that they are governmental entities that are mandating documentation and mandating vaccines for their employees when governmental entities are prohibited from doing so in that act. And then there's also um, the question of higher ed. Higher ed um, ha are kind of making their own rules as, as they do a lot. But higher ed, um, especially at Birmingham Southern, have created a punishment system for unvaccinated students and have, they've actually bragged about the fact that their punishment system is effective. Um, and so um, 
Steve Marshall did issue some, uh, two separate public notices about um, Senate Bill 267, um, but neither one of those addressed the nursing uh, and medical worker situation specifically. We would like for him to address that specifically. It is, <clears throat> it is a, a per perfect storm coming on November 12th um, that we are already short as far as there's a nursing shortage, there's a medical working, a medical worker shortage. And then there's just the, the equity, the equality or the equity, I hate to use that word, but uh, of treating these medical workers um, with disdain after they have done so much for us, um, walking into something they didn't even understand what it was uh, and putting their families at risk and putting their lives at risk. And then now they're being unduly punished. Um, by mandating the documentation of and mandating this vaccine. And so um, I, would, I would just encourage all of y'all to um, go on the Alabama Eagle Forum website and look at all of the documentation that we provided. Um, there are suggestions on how nursing students and um, medical workers can um, do exemptions there are also, there's also suggestions on how to push back on um, the mandates themselves. Uh, and then also I would call on all of us to contact our personal legislators, let them know how we feel about the mandatory masks and the mandatory vaccinations. Um, independent of Joe Biden and his recent executive order situation, we have a situation in Alabama where employees are not being protected in the state. And that is the responsibility of the governor. And that is the responsibility of the attorney general. And um, if they are unwilling to do that, then our legislators need to act on our behalf. So um, thank you for everything that everybody is doing. I really believe that the grassroots are a powerful um, source. And I think that we can make a difference. Thanks so much.